Health Journal, the show that brings you the latest information on prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and research from doctors throughout the United States. Watch the American Health Journal each week on this PBS station. The lifetime risk of developing colorectal cancer not only depends on genetics, but lifestyle choices. In this two-part segment, we'll hear from Dr. Hein Joseph Lenz of the USC Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center about early detection and prevention of this disease. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer in the United States. Every year, over 150,000 people are diagnosed with colon cancer and a third of them die. So it's one of the most common and the most deadliest cancer. So it's very important to understand what are the risks to develop colon cancer. Now, one of the major dietary impacts is wet meat. So you can actually prevent colon cancer very successfully by changing the diet, avoiding wet meat, and you can substitute it to white meat or fish or soy or tofu-based products. Another major factor is alcohol. So we need to reduce our alcohol consume. Does not mean you have to stop completely, but not more than one or two glasses a week. We also know that we can successfully reduce colon cancer by more than 50% by exercising 20, 25 minutes, two or three times a week. Because when we exercise, we make the bowel move and when the bowel moves, it prevents cancer development. It's very easy to prevent colon cancer. And the best way is when your bowel is moving regular. When you do exercise, when you drink, if you eat fiber, this all helps to make the bowel move. Because whenever the bowel habits change with significant constipation and diarrhea, that is usually one of the early signs. Something is wrong with your large bowel. And that should trigger further workup. But the more your bowel has exercise, the better and healthier the colon is. When we would do our colonoscopies, we have the power to prevent colon cancer development because it takes five to 10 years that colon cancer develops. And you have this precursor as a polyp, which can be easily removed. We can 100% prevent colon cancer if we all would buy into this very successful prevention program. I think colon cancer is an absolutely unique cancer because even when colon cancer has metastasized and the most common site is the liver, travel to it, is that when we can control the disease with chemotherapy, we have a chance of cure. That is not true for most of the other cancers. So good successful chemotherapy or treatments which are now being developed will be critical to increase further cure of this patient population. Over the last 10 years, there have been substantial progresses made to develop new treatments, which actually have changed the way we treat colon cancer. Patients 10 years ago may have lived eight or 10 months. Today, it's over 30 months. An unbelievable change and opportunities to develop additional treatments and actually cure more and more patients with successful treatments. The only way to cure colon cancer and any other cancers is really successfully develop strategies to eradicate cancer stem cells. And that is one of the goals of the Wonder Project. When we return, we'll learn how one cancer patient is fighting back. Join the American Health Journal on Facebook. Search for American Health Journal. In our second part to colon cancer prevention, Dr. Lenz introduces us to his patient, Gloria Borges, who took a proactive role in fighting her cancer by establishing an organization to raise funds for cancer research. So Gloria is a very unique patient of mine. I met her more than two years ago, and it became very clear she wants to be part of a team to develop the best treatment options for her. Her goal is to be cured, and she will do anything possible to make it happen. I was diagnosed in September of 2010 
with stage four colon cancer, I was 28 years old. Well, I had emergency surgery. That's when I was diagnosed in September of 2010. Uh, within four days of being released from the hospital, I met with Dr. Lenz and knew immediately that he would be my oncologist. Uh, just his holistic approach and just, he was at the top of his game. It was obvious to me that he was the guy and I was willing to travel anywhere, but luckily it was down the street at USC. And um, so about a year after my diagnosis, after going through, I think I had about 13 rounds of chemo at that point, two surgeries, I decided, you know, I want to do something to give back to this community. I had already started a blog actually, which was just weeks after my diagnosis, which had gotten very popular just organically. All of these people just wanting to hear my story and hear from me. And so I thought, you know, about a year after my diagnosis, you know, why not do something bigger? Why not help more people and make a bigger impact? And as I was doing the research, I found that there were no major colon cancer organizations headquartered in California, which I thought was a major hole there because California, Californians lead the nation in colon cancer cases every year. I launched the Wonder Glow Foundation, which is uh, a play on my blog. My blog is named Wonder Glow, which is my sort of alter ego. It's a play on the word wonderkind and uh, child prodigy. And I felt that in the colon cancer world, you know, diagnosed at 28, and I was a child in that world, and that the things that I did, the, my approach to the disease, I wanted to be a leader and try to help people and show people this is how you fight it. Uh, this is the attitude. This is the approach. We have three main goals. One, the most important one I would say, is to raise money for cutting edge research that gets us to the cure. Uh, we are pretty laser focused on the cure and that will lead into the Wonder Project, which is our most recent initiative. Uh, but the other two things we do is we promote healthy lifestyle choices. So I was diagnosed, I took a 10 month leave of absence. I would, before my diagnosis, I was living the life of a corporate attorney. And when I took that 10 month leave of absence, I started to learn how to take care of my body. And so within a few months I became vegan, uh, completely cut all animal protein out of my diet. Um, I got into, you know, a, a ton of things. Fitness became absolutely essential. Uh, I did five element acupuncture, Reiki guided meditation, everything I could do on my end to make myself as strong as possible. And that's what we do as a foundation. We try to give that blueprint for other patients. We want to help patients realize there are things you can do on your end to be strong and to be fit and healthy. So the Wonder Project is a new initiative that we launched through the Wonder Glow Foundation in February of this year. The goal is to raise $250 million in the next two years. With that money, 100% of the donations will go to cutting edge research led by Dr. Lenz and his medical team. With that money, they believe that they can find the cure for colon cancer in eight to nine years. So the Wonder Glow Foundation does three things. One, raising money for cutting edge research to get to the cure. Two, promoting healthy lifestyle choices like diet, fitness, and other things. Uh, so patients could be as strong as possible while going through treatment. And three, we like to take a very personal approach. I speak with patients and caregivers almost every day. What we wanted to do was create a community by which patients can actually connect with the executive director of the foundation, which is me. And we do that every day. So in order to get in touch with me and to help us with the Wonder Project, uh, just visit www.thewonderproject, T-H-E-W-U-N-D-E-R-P-R-O-J-E-C-T dot org, O-R-G. This is Dr. Ray from Dr. 90210, and you are very smart because you're watching the American Health Journal. Asthma is an inflammatory lung condition that